Welcome back to another video and the results are in. Now, have we stayed within our budget on the cheap TTS project? Let's hop in the car, talk about it, find out where the money's gone and see what the results are. Let's go. Let's see if this cheap TTS project is still a cheap TTS. As you see in a previous video, I said I wanted the budget to be... The budget for this build was 5K, including buying the car. So I think if you can have a sorted TTS for 5K, I think that's a, right, that's a result, isn't it? 5,000 pounds, and that was for doing everything. So let's see what we spent. So the car itself costs us £3,600, which was the cheapest TTS in the country at the time, and may still be. And being a roadster, I think that was a great price. But obviously it did have its issues, and a lot of maintenance was not up to date. So we had to spend quite a lot of maintenance. So we gave the car a full service. And that consists of oil filter, oil, spark plugs, air filter, fuel filter, pollen filter, and a sump plug. And that came to £146.75. And I used all man parts and top of the range NGK plugs. And the man is basically what is OME spec. That is what the manufacturers use anyway. It's just that it's got the Audi Volkswagen badges and boxes on but they are man parts so that wasn't too bad then we've done the cam belt and water pump and idlers and use a genuine Volkswagen Audi kit for that and that came in at 250 pounds we also tackled the drivetrain which consists of the DSG service the Haldex and the front and rear diff oils and that came in at 173 pounds and 14 pence Another thing with this car was, when I first got it, I checked on the diagnostics and it was showing signs of chain stretch. So I thought, do you know something? If I'm gonna keep this car, or even if I'm gonna sell this car, I wanna make sure it's a good car. And I had no problems in the future with it. Obviously there'll be little things, but if anything that we can sort out now, let's do it. So I put a genuine cam chain and tensioner kit, which also came with a special Volkswagen Audi tool to undo the, uh, the cam bolt, which is an absolute nightmare, which I was worrying quite a lot about. Apparently this bolt, that's the bolt that could be an absolute pain. They have been known to shear off and cause all sorts of problems. So I'm hoping it just comes undone without too much hassle. Let's give it a go. It's gonna be a five second bolt or it's gonna end up being a five hour bolt. So let's pray that it's gonna crack off. And that came to 284 pounds for that kit, but it's genuine and we'll probably never need to do that ever again. So we did do some extra bits as well, just as precautions. Like we changed the cam follower and we also replaced the pickup pipe with genuine item and with new gaskets and new seals. That wasn't too bad. That was only £114. Now let's talk about the actual bits that were broken on the car. So the broken bits was the dipstick, the roof flap cover which was missing, the exhaust heat shield which was like a colander and it was literally hanging off. So here's the old one, here's the brand new one. A camshaft sensor, which I did put a genuine one on, but that was my fault, I broke that. And we replaced both the front lower ball joints, even though one of them was advised on the MAT, but I thought it's best to replace both sides. Also, the actual dog bone and both the bushes for that were replaced. Then again, possibly my fault for trying to fit the upgraded bush. Now, this is one of those five minute jobs that is now turning into about five hours. Tell me about it. But anyway, that's all new anyway, so that's done. The interior light, we put a good second hand one in. I also had a code for the EVAP, which I now have sorted out, which I replaced the purge valve 
and the charcoal canister. And we also replaced the thermostat because we were only getting to 80 on the temperature and not getting to the 90. With all the broken bits, came in at 430 pounds and 55 pence. And that is replacing all the broken bits. So I don't think that's too bad. And obviously the back bumper um, diffuser was not on great, but that didn't cost anything to fix that. So that's obviously not on the list. We also gave the brakes a nice little facelift by giving them that nice bit of paint. We changed the fluid in them. We put new pads in them and we put the nice new TTS sticks on and made them look absolutely wicked. Brake fluid I already had, so I didn't have to put that on the list. So the brakes all together only cost £67.88 to do those. So let's talk about the upgrades. So knowing the TFSI engine, I know about the oil balance shaft and I know that they can seize. And with my red one, I did put the Viz free wheel in there. So I would not have to worry about the balance shaft ever seizing. So I did that to this one as well. And also we put in the Powerflex dog bone mount bush in insert bush in which it, they do make a nice bit of difference without being harsh so on upgrades it, we spent 233 pounds and four pence also this car only came with one key and that bugged me because if i ever lost that key or got it stuck in the car that is going to be an absolute headache so i actually got another key made up so I've got a new key. So now the car has two keys. That was £235, but I think that was well worth it for a resale value and also if we decide to keep the car. And obviously then you've got your miscellaneous items, which is like coolant, new bolts, touch-up paint, you know, obviously the brake fluid and stuff like that. And some things I already had in stock, so I didn't have to put a price on them which that only came to a hundred pounds and 90 pence that brings us to the price of all the parts for this car come in at two thousand and thirty five pounds and 26 pence plus that to the price of the car of three thousand six hundred we've come in at five thousand six hundred and thirty five pounds and twenty six pence and i don't know where else you'd get a tts for that sort of money fully sorted and fault free with all those big maintenance items done like the cam belt the chain the dsg servers the heldex whoever changes the diff the diff oil on them we've done it all this car is absolutely faultless and it drives so well. So, so what do you think about what we spent? Do you think £5,635.26p is a really good price for a, an absolutely salted, faultless TTS Roadster? It is high mileage at 164,000 miles. And I've done 367 miles in this now. Everything is working as it should. So comment below what you think, whether you think this is a good deal. And also comment below, what do you think this car's worth now? Have we added value to it? I reckon we could probably get six and a half thousand pounds for this now. I know the mileage is high, but it doesn't need anything for a long, long time. Next year will just literally be an oil service, but it won't need any major items because all the major service things we've done. And we've got proof, we've got it all on video. So if people ever want to see it, they can see it getting done. But this also brings me to the next question. What do we do with this car? Do we keep it? Do we sell it? I do quite like it, and I am going to be using this to go to Quattrofenia 3 this year in September. I believe it's September the 7th to go and do the London to Brighton run. And I'll take this, it'll be a good run. But as I said, I've already done what, 368 miles now and it's been absolutely faultless. The only problem I have with holding on to this car is that A, I probably need the space and B, we could do with the funds 
to then buy something else to do another project. So maybe comment below what project you'd like to see next. I think we need to do something crash damaged and get onto a bit of this co-part stuff. So I've never really done any body work, so I think it'll be good to get on that and have a go at that. Surely it's only nuts and bolts, but who knows? We'll find out. Also, someone in my, uh, on my social media has commented that I put the wrong stickers on the brake calipers. And I have actually changed that now, so you can, you can see a picture of that here. Someone even commented in one of the videos, does the roof not work? You've never got the roof down. The roof works perfect. So I'm gonna go for a nice drive now with the roof down. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.